I'm so dedicated to you in real estate that I traveled all the way to California to report on the Silicon Valley Bank story. Welcome to another local market update with Rick Batista. Hey Chicago, welcome to another monthly market update. We'll be covering February of 2023, the second month of this year, in case you're keeping track. Uh, and yes, uh, Noor Maysoon and I just returned from California. And I'll share with you some fun photos and uh, even a little video later of us as we were trying to crack the story about what happened in Silicon Valley. But first, let's cover the market update. As always, we'll start off with some fun facts, and then we'll share a little bit of my insight and personal experience with you uh, thereafter. So strap in. Fun facts, fun facts, market time. In its continued effort to curb inflation, the Federal Reserve raised its benchmark interest rate in February by a quarter percentage point to 4.5% to 4.75% its eighth rate hike since March of last year, when the interest rate was nearly zero. Mortgage interest rates have dipped slightly from their peak last fall, leading pending sales to increase 8.1% month to month as of last measure, but affordability constraints continue to limit home buyer activity overall, with existing home sales declining for the 12th consecutive month, according to the National Association of Realtors. New listings in the city of Chicago were down 11.5% for detached homes and 37.7% for attached properties, Listings under contract decreased 16.3% for detached homes and 33.8% for attached properties. The median sales price was up 3.1% to $295,000 for detached homes, but was down 7.2% to $320,000 for attached properties. Month supply of inventory increased 34.9% for detached units, but decreased 5.9% for attached units. With buyer demand down from peak levels, home price growth has continued to slow nationwide although prices remain up from a year ago. Sellers have been increasingly cutting prices and offering sales incentives in an attempt to attract buyers who have continued to struggle with affordability challenges this winter. The slight decline in mortgage rates earlier this year convinced some buyers to come off the sidelines, but with rates ticking up again in recent weeks, buyers are once again pulling back, causing sales activity to remain down heading into spring. And certainly that's something that we've been seeing uh, overall across the board. Uh, throughout Chicago and, and the nearby burbs, whether it's talking and working with our clients uh, or even talking with our colleagues, uh, just to kind of keep our ear to the street. Things have been going up and down, the market's stabilizing. We're trying to find its own voice, I guess you can say, um, and that's just going to happen, especially when rates are going up and down. And the mainstream media likes to keep on throwing out scary headlines. Sometimes I think they just do it to, to see what's going to happen, because no matter whether society's in the upswing or downswing, they're going to have something to report on. So returning to the Silicon Valley Bank story, I do want to seriously share some thoughts with you. Uh, let's put things in perspective. Uh, number one, I believe, uh, you know, from looking up some information and, and hearing different news stories uh, and reading some reports about it, Silicon Valley Bank was started uh, nearly 40 years ago, and their origins were to focus on helping startup companies, particularly tech companies, uh, find funding, which at the time was a little hard to do as technology was quickly advancing. Uh, I do believe they were the 16th largest bank in the U.S., but even being the 16th largest bank in the U.S., in all reality, if they didn't have the name that they have, we probably would never even heard of this bank or even the news story. And all the, the tech world has certainly seen uh, its downs lately with all the layoffs we've been hearing about in the news. Just here to tell you, folks, this is life. This is evolution. Some change and thrive. Others don't and become extinct, only to be studied in history books. With that said, perception is reality. Some things that can come out of the story that are both good and bad. One positive that's certainly coming out of the story already is that interest rates are likely to, to dip a little bit. We've already seen the 10-year treasury yield come down a little bit. And if you've been watching our market updates, uh, both weekly and monthly, we did cover this recently just a couple few weeks ago. Uh, and if you're not watching, I'm not sure what you're doing, but uh, we specifically talked about how the 30-year the fixed mortgage rate has been following the same path as the 10-year treasury yield. I will toss that uh, slide up here right now so you can see. Certainly not a one-to-one -one ratio, uh, but the trends have been following over the last uh, probably about 50 years or so, uh, if not longer. Bad thing to come out of this news story? Uncertainty. And people tend to, at least the masses, tend to follow uncertainty. Although I don't particularly agree with that, it's very easy to get caught up in all the news stories, especially now. The news has perfected a way to, to get us scared and keep us scared as much as possible and pretty much dictate how we as a society uh, tend to think whether now or what's coming down the line. And again, this is life, this is evolution, things are going to change. People can predict all they want, uh, but predictions mean nothing unless you're right. 
So right now, all we can do is know what's going on and, and project. Uh, but hopefully now that the federal government has stepped in to this this whole situation out in Silicon Valley, uh, that'll create some some certainty for folks. And as of with everything, time will tell. And we'll certainly be following this story to see how it could impact you and the real estate market, especially here throughout Chicagoland. And at the end of the day, what's most important for you is should I buy or should I sell? Or should I keep on renting? Whatever the situation is, uh, save. You never know when, when a rainy day is coming or, or how many rainy days we may have in a row. Wanted to bring up another slide here where the top 100 economists and home market experts were surveyed. They are certainly projecting a little bit of a dip in this markets in this year for home prices. Uh, might end up being a little bit more of a flat market or flat growth, I should say. And yes, we can certainly have an active market uh, while experiencing flat growth. Uh, not seeing prices uh, go up too much, if at all. But then they're projecting that we're going to be seeing a little bit more of normal appreciation for years to come. Again, I don't know what's going to happen two or three years from now, let alone tomorrow. But it's nice to at least see what top folks in the industry uh, are projecting for the coming years. It can certainly help you make a decision uh, as to what you should be doing for yourself, for your family, uh, for your goals and, and timeline. And here's another chart where the uh, the big play of play is are saying how housing prices are going to look the remainder of the year. And if you take the average of all of these, uh, it's looking like a, just a drop of 0.1%. Uh, so again, flat growth. Being a Chicagoland realtor, I can tell you what's going on throughout Chicago and the Burbs. And so much of it will depend on the area and the individual opportunity, uh, that meaning condition, timing, uh, and the circumstances of both the buyer and seller. Because there's certainly always a story uh, to tell from both sides. Ultimate question is, should I buy this year? My answer is, I don't know. We'd have to talk and see what makes the most sense for you. But what I do know is this, uh, and here's a few things that I want to make sure that you're fully aware of. Uh, and this is just a very short list. There's so many other factors involved. And in when you're considering whether or not you should be uh, buying or keep on renting, or as we'll talk about too, uh, whether or not you should be selling in 2023. So number one, if you're renting and you are thinking about buying, you know that rents have been going up. Uh, you've seen it for yourself, whether you've been moving from apartment to apartment, upgrading, downgrading, seeing what fits within your means and your needs. There's no doubt, especially in Chicago and uh, in many of the nearby suburbs, uh, rents have gotten pretty crazy high. Uh, uh, and if you're staying in a place, there's a lot of landlords who are increasing uh, by a great percentage, which could end up costing you an additional hundreds of dollars a month and that can turn into potentially thousands of dollars throughout throughout a year's time but if you do follow us on social media uh, you do know that we we do a, a fair number of rentals so we know the market really well and with that said uh, a lot of people are paying more in rent than what they could be paying for a, a monthly mortgage and you would ask logically why would that be the case again all comes down to individual situation and circumstances you may not be thinking about buying because you feel that you haven't saved enough or you think you haven't saved enough. A lot of folks have that common misconception that you need at least 20% down to buy a home. And we've covered that in some of our recent social media posts as well. You may only need about three, three and a half percent to purchase a home up to five, eight, 10%. All depends on what lender you're going with and what programs they have for buyers and particularly first time home buyers. Another reason you may not be thinking about buying right now is that you are looking to relocate in the near future. Waiting to hear about a new job or a job offer, a new position, a new role within your company that you're at now uh, that may end up taking you to another another city that would require you to commute and you really don't want to do that. So you're waiting to see what's going to happen there. Another reason is that you have the income and the down payment saved up, but what you don't have is a credit score. Plenty of folks out there who are in that situation, whether it's due to student loans or you were impacted by the pandemic, making good money. Your credit has suffered and trying to build that back up and you may not qualify for mortgage on your own or you're not going to get the rate that you want. Certainly a legitimate concern, uh, but may or may not be the reason as to why you should be waiting to start building up that equity in your home. So just like a home can mean so many different things for each individual, there are many reasons or there could be many reasons why you're choosing to rent versus buy. So either path you take if you're looking to rent uh, or take that plunge into home ownership, feel free to reach out. We we are here to help and take care of you. Second reason as to why you should consider buying right now. If you look at home prices over the last 30 years across the country, there has been, has been a change of 289.1% in home prices, and that is on the upside. Another thing that we covered in recent videos is that 
Interest rates certainly are higher than they have been, uh, especially recently, but they are not as high as they have been in the past. And back in the early mid-ish 1980s, they were nearly 18%. That is a crazy amount to, when you're comparing it to today's standards, even at these unbelievably high rates today, uh, but nearly 18%. And yes, homes do not cost the same that they do today, but it's nearly 18%. Can you imagine paying 18% or refinancing to 12% uh, uh, just, to, just to get a better rate? Uh, it's unheard of today, but that did happen at one time. Talk to your family members, your parents or grandparents who, who may have been purchasing or selling homes at that time uh, and get their experience and their take on it. And there's a good chance that they made out, especially if they hung on to the property for, for some time. You know, real estate is a kind of more of a long game sometimes. And certainly you can get a good deal and, and turn it around and make a profit in a short amount of time, but chances are you're going to make a bigger profit the longer you hang on to it. So even if you buy at a high rate today, uh, there's a great chance that you're going to be able to refinance it later and or when the time comes where it makes sense to sell and not necessarily makes sense according to the market, but makes sense for you and your situation, your circumstances, there's a pretty good chance that that's been proven historically that you will be better off uh, financially than if you had just ended up renting and paying somebody else's mortgage. Third reason that you should consider buying right now, and this is definitely more for the buyers and the sellers out there, but you know, sellers are looking at all this data information. They're looking at the, the news headlines and they're making decisions. And a lot of folks are going to end up waiting. They're going to wait till, you know, just like, oh, I don't want to sell in the fall. Let me wait till the spring. They're looking at it now and say, well, if rates are going, if rates are still stabilizing right now, uh, they may go up, might be fewer buyers, prices might go down this year or just stay flat. I'm going to take my chances and sell for a little bit more next year. And then on the flip side, you see buyers looking at the same information and saying, oh, I'm just going to wait till rates go down a little bit. If everybody's listening to this and everybody's waiting, guess what could potentially happen? Everybody's going to wait. It can turn into a shit show or it can certainly turn into a stressful situation, particularly for buyers, when everybody's out there trying to buy at the same time. And usually, I'm not saying it's not gonna be stressful, but usually what happens in those circumstances is that a lot of new realtors flood the market. There's a lot of people out there without the industry knowledge or the experience to help represent you, whether you're selling or buying. And then just overall, it creates a very frenzied environment uh, where you're having bidding wars and potentially overpaying for, for a house. It could cause you to have some icky feelings uh, immediately after, or maybe even a year or two after, down the road. And I completely understand that stress happens. Stress is a part of life. Why put yourself in a situation that could be very, very stressful? So if you have to buy now with a higher interest rate, I always say, can't put a price tag on peace of mind. Now, although only time can give you the answers to all the questions, fears, and concerns that you have, ultimately we have to make the best decisions on what we know now. If you need help making those decisions, again, feel free to reach out will help make sense of it all and help you choose the right path for you. Now, the fourth reason as to why you should consider buying right now, I'm going to say a word or I'm sorry, a phrase that is starting to creep up that ad nauseum list for me. And, you know, nowadays there are just so many words uh, that you hear time and time and time again, whether it's through news stories, headlines, social media posts, people talking about it just becomes sickening, uh, but certainly some validity as to why people are talking about these things. Uh, one of them is generational wealth. Uh, that's a term that that I'm certainly hearing uh, over and over again in different things, uh, but it's true. People, for the most part, do want to leave something behind. Uh, they want to leave something behind for their their children, their loved ones, make sure that they're taken care of, or at least they can start off their adult life or continue their adult life on the right foot. And that's what I think a lot of uh, people, not just Americans, uh, but certainly that American dream has been a part of is making sure you're taking care of the, those around you, even when you're not here. And let's face it, life is expensive. You can have a job, you can have a good paying job or a great paying job, but a lot of people struggle with saving. So what's one of the greatest ways that somebody can kind of create a savings account or develop some sort of wealth uh, for themselves or their family? And that's through home ownership. Even if you spent years, uh, you know, struggling a little bit or living more within your means, living a little bit more of a frugal lifestyle, uh, in, in the end, Home ownership is and has been probably the number one way that people have had the opportunity to build that wealth. Hopefully there comes a time where you're able to sell your property and reap the rewards of your hard work, um, but sometimes that doesn't happen and you leave this earth and somebody that you love, whether it's a spouse or your children, are able to be in a much better position thanks to you. 
But this reminds me of a scene in one of the greatest movies of all time, not just a holiday movie, uh, It's a Wonderful Life, where George Bailey is telling off Mr. Potter in front of the board. Uh, this is uh, about three months after his father passed away. And his father, if you don't know the story, uh, headed up the, the local savings and loan, uh, helping people get out of the slums and, and into a nice little home. And this is a time where you know, homes were costing $5,000, at least in, in these parts, based in the movie. But that was very common, having spoken with with many people of yesteryear. But there just comes a point where George snaps and, and he loses it. And he's ripping into Mr. Potter and, because Mr. Potter's bringing up a specific uh, loan that was just recently passed. A uh, mortgage loan that was given to a taxi cab driver that was a friend of George, et cetera, et cetera. Watch the movie, if you haven't already, a thousand times like I have. But George says, wait, wait, wait for what? Until they're so old and broken down? Until their children grow up and leave them? You know how long it takes a working man to save $5,000? And that's true. If buying and, and being a homeowner has been something that you've been putting off, bust out the calculator and do the math. How much have you paid in rent uh, that you're never going to get back? How much do you have saved up right now? Is this an option? Give us a call. We'll be more than happy to get in touch with some mortgage lenders uh, who might have some different programs that fit your needs and your budget and get you into your very own home. Sellers, should I sell this year? That's a big question. And if you aren't on the market right now, I'm going to say yes. Only if it makes sense for you. Keep in mind, it always has to make sense for you. But I assure you, we are seeing more and more buyers are craving for quality options. A lot of the homes that we're seeing right now on the market that have been sitting on the market really aren't worth their asking price. Uh, needs too much work. They've been neglected for years. And some sellers are being a little stubborn uh, as to what they feel they should be getting for the home. Or they're going to hold off and see how the spring market pans out. And they're, those are the sellers that are hoping for a frenzied market uh, so people can just come and toss money uh, at something that's been sitting on the market for, for half a year or longer. But to those who are on the market right now, Sellers, if it hasn't sold, I can pretty much guarantee you uh, that it's probably the price, uh, the price uh, and or the marketing. But even if you have somebody who's not marketing the property pretty well, if your house is out there, somebody's going to find it. Uh, if it's not priced right, ain't nobody going to buy it, at least not right now. So for those particular sellers, if you expect to hit the market high and kind of see where it goes, those days, at least for now, are certainly over and long gone. Not a great strategy. So my biggest suggestion to you and piece of advice is price it right, right out of the gate. If you do that, I can almost in nearly 100% guarantee you that you will have a great deal of interest, possibly multiple bids, and sell for a fair price, uh, whether it's very close to what you're asking, what you're asking, or in some cases, a little bit over of what you're asking. So if you're on the market right now and not seeing the results that you would like, feel free to give us a call. We're ready to have some tough conversations, if needed. To get you the results you do need it may not be what you want but it certainly can be what you need so now that i've covered these fun facts and shared some insight with you i say hey everyone chill the bleep up okay focus on yourselves go about your business pay attention to what's going on around you but change with the times to, to both meet your needs at the time and or your goals for the future now let's dive into the numbers so from fun facts we go to quick facts and please keep in mind, this is for residential real estate activity only in Chicago proper, the 77 areas of Chicago. For closed sales, so we were down 36.7%. That was a one-year change in closed sales for all residential properties. The one-year change in homes for sale uh, was down by 17.1%. And not to be left out, the one-year change in median sales price for all residential properties down by 3.1%. And before we go into some of the other nitty gritty stuff, uh, we've been following the Lender Mediated Report, uh, which is a tool that that's provided to the Chicago Association of Realtors uh, through our local MLS. And this is keeping track of properties that are uh, foreclosed, REO, pre-foreclosure, short sale, essentially bank-owned or soon-to-be bank-owned properties. And over the last few months, uh, these are numbers that we've seen go up and down a little bit. I would say without a doubt, these numbers are going to go up, uh, when, especially when you compare them year over year. Uh, and during the pandemic, there was a moratorium and banks were trying to do what they could uh, to keep homeowners into their home rather than letting them uh, go into foreclosure or short sale and lose their home. And a lot of people were in a situation where they had equity because of the way that the market was going really nutty. Uh, so even if they had a property that wasn't the hottest, uh, it was a hot market and they were able to sell thanks to that equity. So for the month of February, the share of closed sales that were lender mediated, 3.9% down very slightly 
uh, to January's 4%. Uh, December, we saw 2.7%, November 2.4%, October 1.7%, and September 2.2%. So certainly not a threat, uh, not a threat yet. There's other information that we have put out there on our social media platforms uh, talking about why the housing market today is not the housing market of 2008. Everybody out there crying and saying that there's this big, huge bubble that's forming, very different circumstances, and be more than happy to have a conversation with you and go more in depth about that. But don't listen to everything you hear. Now let's take a look a little bit more detail about the entire city of Chicago. Uh, For the purpose of this video, we're going to be covering detached single family homes only. Um, This report also has information for attached single family homes, attached being condos and townhomes. If you like a copy of this report or any of the other reports that we have, I'd be more than happy to share them with you. We can send them over via email uh, with PDF attachments. So for the month of February, uh, all residential properties. And the rest of these numbers, we're going to be comparing two categories. uh, One, February of this year to February of last year, 2022. uh, And then comparing year to date. So through February 2023 and through February 2022. New listings, we wrapped up last month with 1,166, down by 11.5%. Uh, year to date, we're at 2,442, down by 4.6% year over year. Close sales, big dip. 441 last month, uh, down by 40.6%. Comparing to last year's February, please keep in mind, the rates were so low, very, very different market. So do not panic, folks. Uh, year to date, 906 to 1506, down by nearly 40%. Homes under contract, those that are contingent or pending. We saw 747 last month, down 16.3% compared to the February prior. And 1,352 year to date, down by 23.7% year over year. Median sales price, a median sales price being the number that's smack dab in the middle, equal number of homes sold for more than and less than this number. Uh, 295k last month, up by 3.1%. Mm, that's promising. A uh, year to date, 276.5. That was down 4.5% year over year. Now, looking at average sales price, that was also up comparing the two Februarys. Average pre- sales price last month for a single family detached home, 431,792, an increase of 2.6% over last year's February. Year to date average 394, 971, down by 6.1% year over year. And here's one statistic that I found uh, very interesting, and I certainly wanted to share with you. The average list price uh, last month was $469,062, which, which was down considerably uh, to last year's February by 12.2%. Year to date, 470,844 down by 8.4% year over year. It's a fair indicator, at least for the month of February, uh, that we are going to see a little bit more of a flat market and perhaps see prices either go down a little bit uh, or depending on where you're located and what the circumstances are, especially what kind of property you have and how well it's been maintained. uh, We may see some home prices go up in certain areas, but we're halfway through the month of March. Let's see how this month plays out next month as we're going into the spring market. Percent of original list price received. Uh, This is something that we've been talking about at great length. If you want to sell your home in today's market, you have to price it right. Not a week from now, not two weeks from now, the moment that you put it on the market. uh, You become instantly vulnerable if you hit the market high. So please, sellers out there, let's have an honest conversation. Feel free to reach out to me uh, or talk with your broker that you're already working with. But please have those brutally honest conversations because it's not a good situation to be in, especially if you're on a tight timeline. Uh, You got to sell. You got to sell now. Don't play around with the price. But last month, we saw a percent of original list price received at 95% down by 2.8% looking at February 2022 and year to date 94.6% down 2.6% year over year. Market time, no doubt, going to see higher higher market times this year than last year. Uh, 90 versus 61, there's an increase of 46.5%. And year-to-date, 82 to 61, increase of 33.8%. So basically, to sell a house now, it ain't easy. Um, but us brokers are just going to have to work a little, a little bit harder. And I think for those who thrive in this industry, uh, it'll only make us better. Inventory of homes for sale, we wrapped up the month 
of February with 2,174 detached single family homes. And that was up by 8.9% year over year. Now let's take a look at what's happening in your neck of the woods. So today we've covered a lot of information. What does it all mean for you? I don't know. I have no idea. It all depends on what your needs are, what your situation is, what your goals are. And I won't know any of that until you reach out to us and we talk. Many ways to get in touch with us. Call, text, email, or contact information is below. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate your time. We're here trying to give you as much information as possible so that you can feel confident in the decisions that you are making or planning to make very soon. Enjoy the rest of your day, your week. Take care of yourselves and each other, and we'll catch you next time. Oh, 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 oh,